So we are going to move on to the Q and A. Um, so this is the Q and A portion with slides. So this is questions that people have previously sent in. So, and we hopefully have answered you. Okay, <clears throat> first question. I have a nine month old standard poodle puppy with the softest, sparsest coat I've ever groomed. Her coat breaks where there are elastics. When I use wrappers, she ends up scratching and losing even more coat. Um, so yes, this is a common problem. Um, I like to keep the coat fairly soft. Like I don't like to use texturizing products in, for maintenance because of the heart of the coat is um, the more it is apt to break. Um, also using wrappers. So usually if dogs are really persistent at scratching out the wrappers, it's typically because either the section that you wrapped is too big and or the wrapper is too big or both because then they're heavy, they're pulling at a lot of coat or the rubber band or the wrapper is too tight, which is again, usually because the section is too big. And um, from that, they just are irritated. It's like their ponytail is in too tight and then they do scratch it out. Um, the size of bands also important. Um, wrapping or banding over paper towel or cotton is an extreme measure, but could be used and I will demonstrate. So, um, I just have a lot of stuff going on on my desk and I'm going to find a little, I'm going to use the tail just because the hair kind of looks good. Um, Can you switch it back to the non-slide mode, Allison? And Thank so I can stop sharing. There we go. And there's Perfect. Okay. So what happens is a lot of times people use a section that is too big, right? So immediately that would be my first go-to. So um I always say the biggest section that your dog should have when wrapping is if you parted the hair um, from the front corner of the ear to the back corner of the ear and straight across the head to the other side so you would have a portion on the top of your dog's look how cooperative fifi is i can just do that so if um if this was the top of her ear um and we just went straight across here right, from the front corner of the ear to the front corner of the other ear and the front corner, the back corner of the ear to the other back ear and straight across the back. Now this is a white dog. So this would be, in relation to the size of the dog, this would be the biggest section I would ever have, right? So is this ear section. So front corner of the ear, back corner of the ear and straight across to the other side. So all of my wrapping sections, would never be bigger than this as I continued down the back or wherever they were. If your dog is scratching at that, then make them half that size, right? Because your dog is just maybe more sensitive to the bands and wraps. So what I mean by even if you're not wrapping, and so I'm just going to demonstrate here because it's hopefully easier for you to see, and maybe I'll just move a little uh, Fifi closer um, so that you can see. So say I was going to wrap this section and my dog was always scratching at the rubber bands. I might take a little piece of paper towel, right? So this is just a piece of, of bounty paper towel and it's cut this big. And I might just wrap it. So I've taken, this is a proper section of hair. I've separated it, it's completely combed out. And I would take this and I would wrap it around the hair and then I would secure it with a rubber band and I would only go around this section three times, right? Because I don't want it to be very, and then I would pull it so it was nice and loose. So that is one thing that I would do just to start getting my dog used to having bands or wraps, especially on that really, really soft coat that is breaking a lot. Now, even more extreme than that is I would use a piece of cotton. So this isn't the cotton I would use. 
this is cotton that I had in the house. And what I would do is I would buy the proper first aid cotton that, you know, comes with back to the paper. It's a little bit thinner than this, but the same thing is I would take this cotton and I would wrap it. Now this is extreme. I've only ever done this two or three times in my 30 years of, of working with poodles, which I think is longer than that, but I would wrap it all around this section of hair. And then I would put a rubber band over it again three times to really, really protect that hair. Now I do like to then cover this with a wrapper. Um, but again, for your purpose, this would probably be overkill because your dog thinks um, that the wrappers are too heavy. The other thing you can do is use a specialty wrap like this organza wrap. And I would cut it to the exact size. So a lot of times in my demos, I will use a wrapper and I will just fold it over extra times. But I would cut an organza wrap to the exact size that I need. And I would, because it's very, very lightweight, way lighter than plastic. So I'm not using this for ears, but again, I would wrap it around the hair to keep it nice and light and then just fold it in half and again secure with it with a rubber band. So what I actually think is I actually think that the sections that you are using are too big but these are some other tips that would help with the coat and with um, helping to stop breakage while using rubber bands. So I hope that helped and we're going to go back to sharing our screen. Um, and the next slide. Okay. Um, so this was again the question. So the poodle puppy has a very sparse coat and I added a bit of oil to her conditioner and then pumped it through her after drying and it looked like she'd been eaten by moths. So this is a problem with oil. Oil is always going to make your dog look moth-eaten because it's going to soak differently into the oil molecule is heavier than water. You can't get it emulsified or worked in really well. So it's heavier on some spots and lighter on other spots. Again, I don't like oil as I feel that it does clog the skin and makes the drying harder so that you're working your brush harder through the coat to get it to dry. And like I said, um, I only, we went over this earlier, but I only use oil in a spray bottle while drying the hair. Um, for those looking on here, oh, maybe if I, if I do that, do I get a pointer? No, apparently I don't. Um, so here, so you can see right here on this slide where the hair is thicker and then here where the hair is thinner. And this is usually a brushing error, right? Like this is usually you um, are brushing either a little too hard, you're not being aware of your brushing technique as you get to the ends because the dog's hair should be almost as thick at the end as it is in here. Um, for me, what I would do is I would cut, especially right now, I would cut all of this dead hair off. So I would cut a line right here. And what happens if I do this? Um, yeah, I would cut a line right there and all of this hair would be cut off, right? So that's what I would do uh, in this situation. Um, so here, what pro the question was, what products would you recommend for maintenance bathing and conditioning a sparse coated poodle puppy? So I would use the day to day as it has colloidal oatmeal in it. Um, for show baths, I always use clean start and after bath. And I would add the Spectrum 10 as we showed before to my dog's normal routine. Um, so the next question is, is that her, the question that with spring rains, mud, she has a 50 and a 15 week old puppy that thinks wraps and bands and McNasty are delicious. So this is a person with a poodle. She's asking what to do, coping with the spring rains and the mud, etc. So for me, I wrap my dogs. I wrap the ears, I leave the top knot in bands, I wrap all the way down the back, and I honestly just let them be dirty, right? Because I'm not, it's not going to stain them. If they do get really, really heavily muddy, I might rinse out their feet, but I figure I'm protecting all of the best hair. Um, I hope with the McNasty, so McNasty is an equine product that's safe for dogs, that stops with chewing, and I recommend that people put it on um, their bands 
uh, or the wrappers of poodles if they have other poodles that are going after them. Um, this could be the same for American Cockers. We have a question about that coming up soon. And make sure that there is something on there for the McNasty to snow soak into. So I am going to put like a, a small piece of cloth, like a cheese cloth, over top of the wrap and spray the McNasty in that so the McNasty has something to hold on to. And you might have to spray it a couple times a day, especially if this puppy is going to always go after it. And last case scenario, you might have to separate your dog. So I have had this many, many times. People said, my other dog won't leave my dog alone. Well, if you want to grow hair on your show dog, then you are going to have to separate them, right? If there is no other way, they must be separated. And it can be for like a shorter period. You know, it's not going to be for very long. You might be able to separate them and then your puppy will grow out of it. You might be able to only let them together when you are right there to correct the puppy for going after the bands and wraps. But sometimes that is the only option. Sometimes the easiest option is, you know, I once had somebody tell me they couldn't grow any top knot on the Yorkie because their Yorkie always came in and rubbed it on the, the couch. And I'm like, then you have to not let them rub it on the couch. When they come in, you have to like pick them up or do something so that they can't do that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm just gonna have another drink of water while everybody reads this question. So this person has several American Cockers that are black and uh, they're about to commence their junior's career. And how should I tackle puppy coat changing into to adult coat, the reddening and blacks and keeping the bevels shorter than usual? So going through a coat change, I dry every, I bath and dry every three to five days. And for a dog like an American Cocker, an Afghan Hound, a Havanese, a Shih Tzu, um, I might in between that, if I know that they're really matting up like in their, you know, like <clears throat> in all the friction areas, right? So in their armpits, behind their ears, around their butt, um, and in their loin, I might put some conditioner in a spray bottle and with my dryer on medium or cool I might just you know have the dryer and just blow through those places every day especially right now if you have time. One thing that I think people do not do enough of in any breed including all the cockers all the springers is clip out all of that belly hair and the inside leg hair. Um, you don't need like especially males like anything that is around their penis insides of the back legs, up the stomach, even if you just took like the width of one clipper blade, and I'm going to show you that on Fifi, um, up the middle of your dog, dog's belly, nobody is ever going to see that unless you have a very, very sparsely coated dog. And if you do, then probably the matting from coat change isn't really affecting you. Um, so the reddening and blacks, again, maybe try to use products with sunscreen in them. You can use ice on ice does have sunscreen sprayed on the ends. Um, you try to keep them out of the sun. Try to have either the bed that they like to lounge on outside um, covered, right? So that they're not out in the sun. I know that they all love to sunbathe. That is a problem. But you know, I have a friend that has red Siberians and he only lets them out at night, right? Because that's the only time. So a covered run, a covered lounge area is really going to help. Also with American Cockers, um, I found that the reddening was basically on the tips of the coat, so I would wrap them now, but this is something that, especially with an older dog, um, you have to watch that they're not chewing on the wraps and that your other dogs aren't chewing the wraps out because otherwise they're just going to chew out all that hair and that's not good. Uh, keeping the bevels shorter than usual, again, this is where the vision board would work really well for you because you could have a, like a picture of your dog with the bevels, how they are in the ring and you know, just think, okay, my dog will grow approximately three quarters to one inch of coat a month. I am going to have six weeks without a dog show. So that is an, uh, at least an inch of coat and mark it, you know, on that vision board photo. So have a photo of your dog with the bevels you like, and then with a felt pen, mark it so that they're an inch shorter and then trim your dog to match the photo. I think that's the easiest way for you to do it. So I'm going to stop sharing this and we're going to go back to Fifi. So what I mean, and again, Fifi is super cooperative, right? So if we have Fifi, I'm going to move this closer, right? So, and I 
think I need to tip you down a little bit more. So with Fifi, so here is the belly coat, right? So your dog, basically a clipper wide width all the way up, holding all this hair out of the way of your American Cocker, your English Cocker, your Springer, your Havanese, what have you. You can clipper all this hair, one clipper blade wide, all the way up the inside of your model dog, right? Same with the back legs. You can go and take all this hair out from between the back legs. We don't need that. You're gonna hold all the good outside coat out of your way. You can band it out of your way so you can take rubber bands, you can take hair clips and band all of this hair up and out of your way and then clipper the stuff on the inside that you're not going to use, especially in the next few months, right? Again, standing back and looking at our dog. Um, you know, look at the overall outline, take a photo and then mark it with your marker so that it is an inch shorter. You know that in six weeks, your dog is going to grow at least one inch of coat. So make it that much shorter. And I hope that that helped you. And we'll go back to sharing our screen. Okay, so how can I sculpt and shape a double coated breed by taking out the undercoat? So um, they want to shape the double coated breed, but they don't want to like use thinning shears on the coat, right? So uh, this is something where people don't typically understand um, how much the bath and the dry is so important to the overall look of the dog. So first of all, your dog must be completely bathed and dried. And then I like to use a spray like bottoms up diluted 16 to one and, and actually layer comb my double coated dog. Um, then I want you to step back and look at the dog overall look at the overall outline of the dog and try not to work on one small area. And this is how you will achieve a better overall look. I'm going to start with a coarse Coat King type rake and rake out the undercoat. And I'm going to, again, like just keep looking at the, the whole picture of the dog, not just focus on one area and keep like, if you know I want them to have a longer looking neck, I'm gonna work on that step back and look. Um, so essentially going over the dog with a fine tooth comb, literally followed by a coarse rake, followed by a stripping knife, and then finally followed by your fingers with a comb is how you are going to get the look. So again, I am going to demonstrate on the lovely and talented Fifi, if I could find my slipper brush, which is right here. Okay, so stop share. Okay, so again, we have Fifi. So now Fifi is no longer a poodle. Fifi is a Siberian Husky or an Alaskan Malamute or some kind of double coated breed. So we have bathed her, we have dried her absolutely positively completely, and now we are ready to comb. So what people I think sometimes miss out on, there's nothing in that spray bottle is, oh, here's my spray bottle. Sorry about looking at my armpit, but you know, this is the first time we've done this. Okay, so now that my double coated breed is, could be a Samoyed, could be anything, right? It's completely bathed and dried, absolutely clean, absolutely 100% dry. Then I am actually going to layer comb it. So, um, you know, I want the neck hair to go up. I want the side coat just to stand out. So I'm going to brush the coat in the direction that I want it to go. So if I was using my, I would do a little tiny section like this, right? So I'm using, and I'm brushing the hair straight out from my dog. So if you can see it like that, then I am using a fine tooth comb. So this is the Jill comb, and I am going to comb the coat out of my dog right? And until I can get a comb through it, I'm going to use my bottoms up, diluted 16 to 1, and give it a little mist. And I'm going to make sure, and I'm going to do this over my entire dog. So this is probably going to take me at least half an hour, up to an hour, depending on how quick I am, how 
and I'm gonna do this over my entire dog. So your double-coated breed is absolutely positively cleaned out and has a layer of some kind of product that's gonna help the coat stand away from it, but not sticky at all. So like I said, bottoms up 16 to one. We used to actually use Aqua Velva, the men's um, aftershave and water when I first started in dogs to get this, the coat to stand straight out. And some people think that that is still the best thing to use. It still just really gets that coat out and away. So once I have the entire dog brushed out, I'm gonna look and I'm gonna think, well, wow, like she looks really thick through the thigh. So I'm gonna use my coat king. So this is a coarse coat king. You can see how wide apart the tines are. And I'm just going to start using it and shaping it, always going in the direction that I want the coat to come in or lay, right? So I'm gonna look at that. I'm gonna think, okay, under the ear tends to be a, a place where there is too much coat. I'm just gonna really start raking this out, right? Uh, the underline and always going in the direction I want it to go. This chest, like, um, you know, right under here, like here's the jaw. I want there to be a little bit, you know, of a chest line, but right underneath the chin is a place that need, and I'm going to strip it out. And once I've done this, um, then I am going to use my, I, I use like a butter knife, like a classic stripping knife, and this is a fine, so I'd use a fine or a coarse one. And I'm going to like use this to detail the areas, right? So it might be under the chin, um, and it might be using my finger, my thumb, and the knife to just pull out some hair where I really need it. Then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my comb and I'm going to go through some of these areas, and maybe with my fingers, I'm going to have to get in there and pull out some of that little undercoat that's just really wrecking my outline. One tip that you can also use is I will use an ear powder because it's really grippy. And so say I'm on the final step, I've used my coat king, I've used my stripping knife, and now I'm using my fingers because right in here in the tuck up is always an area on those double coated breeds that I can't get perfectly. I don't wanna trim it with scissors or thinning shears. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna pull this hair out. But maybe just putting a little sprinkle of ear powder is just gonna help me grip that coat. And it's a little bit easier on my fingers to really start shaping the coat with your fingers. If you don't wanna use scissors or thinning shears, that's your choice. Stripping knife going from coarse to fine and finally your fingers. Um, if you don't have ear powder, chalk, baby powder, cornstarch will work, but the ear powder is designed for it, which is why I personally really love it. And it works really well for me. Okay, so back to sharing the screen. And again, you know, as we go through these Q and A's, if you have follow up questions, if you didn't quite understand something, please just add it into our Q and A list and I will try to get to it. And our next slide. Uh, why do I, so this, now we're moving on to questions that came in this morning. So I didn't have time to like, well, Katie didn't have time for me to answer the question and then get it back up there. Um, so why do I find white poodles so much difficult to maintain and fluff than blacks? Okay, so this is a question I had to think about because I find the opposite. I find blacks harder uh, than whites. So most likely uh, the reason that you have difficulty with this is that you're not getting the white hair all the way clean, right? So you might have to switch to a different shampoo, um, a different, if you're using like a hydro surge and not using like shampoo and traditionally rinsing with water, that's another thing that I find with poodles really helps is I don't have a lot, tons of people do have success with the hydro surge, I don't. Um, so I would say it's your shampoo. Um, one thing about white, dogs in general is one of my rules is I only like to use white colored products on them. So I don't like to use anything. I don't like to use a bluing shampoo on them. I don't like to use um, a red shampoo, a medicated shampoo. I don't like to use even a yellow colored shampoo. I'm only going to use some, a product that is white or clear on my white poodles. So I would say switch up your shampoo. Don't use a hydro surge. Um, 
Be careful of what conditioners you're using. Be careful that your brushes are absolutely clean because some brushes can actually tarnish the hair. Also, um, check out where are they sleeping and lying. Um, make sure they're on like more satiny bread. So like I find white poodles just magnify everything that you do. Um, but I find it for me, it magnifies it in a good way, not a bad way. So I hope that those tips help. Um, okay, so how do I get my spaniel furnishings to look as good as Will Alexander's on show day? So um, as the former Mrs. Alexander, well, and I guess I'm also now Miss Alexander, but for a totally different reason. Um, so not only do I know the answer to this question, but just for fun, I actually phoned Will this morning to make sure that he hadn't changed something. So whatever I told you was wrong. So here's the problem is that most people just don't try. Right, most, uh, this is like the hard truth, but most people actually just don't try, they give up. So first of all, the furnishings are absolutely, the, fir the same person has to do it. So if you, or the same person that knows the exact same technique has to do it. So your dog needs to look perfect at home. If your dog did not look perfect at home and you thought, oh, I'll fix that at the show, that is not going to work. Fix it at home. At home, you have all the, your perfect stuff. At home, you have all the time in the world. You're not stressed. So if you can't look get the furnishings to look as good as Will's do at home, you are not going to get them to look as good um, on, I'm gonna stop sharing this, um, as they, you're not gonna get them to look that good at the dog show. That's just how it works, right? So if they don't look as good at home, work on them at home until they absolutely positively look as good. So at the dog show, this is what Will does. He is going to get the coat wet. He is going to shampoo it and rinse it out. And then he is going to apply conditioner. He's going to towel them dry and they're going to stand on a dry towel at the dog show. And then he is going to brush through all of the furnishings and he's going to brush through how he wants them to be dried. So if it's a dog that needs more boning, he is going to brush through all of the bone on the front of the leg. So if again, if Fifi was a spaniel and we can look down at her, he is going to take his brush and he's going to brush all of this hair up. Then the elbow hair is going to come up into the elbow and go down. Then all the furnishing hair is going to go down, right? Then all this leg hair and stifle hair is going to be pulled forward. Then the front of the back leg, get Fifi off the comb, is going to be combed up. The hawk hair is going to be combed up, side of the leg is going to be combed up, and this is going to go down. So he's going to do all of that. Then he is going to apply mousse in each one of these areas. So he's going to apply mousse to the front of the leg, to the furnishings, to the furnishings that drop down here, furnishings on the stifle, and in the hawk and the front of the back foot as well. And again, do the same thing, brushing all the hair how he wants the hair trained. So that means the bat, so like this is going to be one application of mousse. The side of the leg is one application of mousse, the back of the leg. Then this is going to go back and down and he's going to brush it. Then he's going to brush this, then the stifle, then the hawk, front of the back leg as well, and the side and just have everything, it's still soaking wet, right? So he's bathed it, he sprayed it with a little bit of, con he's toweled it dry, then he sprayed it with a little bit of conditioner, then he's brushed through it, then he's added the mousse and brushed through it again, and now he's going to dry it. But in the same way, he is thinking about where every hair is going to go. This is going to be dried up, this is going to be dried up and then down, and he's going to do that. And when he's drying, he is actually, he's not just drying, He's like actually drying and stretching each hair with the brush, putting the brush in there and really stretching and making sure that hair is dry. And your dog needs to be 110% dry. The dog cannot be 90% dry, 90% curls, gets a kink even when they sit down, and your dog doesn't go back in a crate at this point. You have to have your timing perfect so that your dog is dry on the table. And then as a very last finishing touch, whether it's a spaniel, a setter, whatever it is, just like we tip a poodle, Will is gonna go back in there and he's just going, oh, sorry, couldn't see Fifi. Will is gonna go back in there and he's just going to like, you're tipping a poodle, just really tidy up that underline. And remember the underline is the entire line that goes under your dog, not just here. 
this entire line is then just going to be neatly, he uses, well, I should switch to thinning shears because yes, he would use thinning shears, not straight shears. So with his thinning shears, he is going to just tidy up that entire underline. So that's it, hot tip. I should talk to Will just for you guys. And Will has some great courses and he's also doing a finishing course for our school, so. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give us a like, and if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon, bye.